here's a specific reason you should care about these legislative races, taxes. Under Oregon law, the state house or Senate must get three fifths of the members to vote yes for a tax measure. That's 60%. And it's a pretty steep hill to climb, usually, unless you already have a big majority with just your party alone. And guess what? Democrats in Oregon do have exactly that in both the House and the Senate, at least for the moment. Here's the makeup of the Oregon House, which has 60 members, all of them up for election right now. Democrats have the majority with 37 members. Republicans have 23. That means as long as they're unified, Democrats can vote through any tax measure that they want without a single yes vote for Republicans. And in fact, we've seen that. In 2019, Democrats pushed through the Student Success Act, which taxed businesses and will raise about a billion dollars a year for schools. And yes, I've seen your emails. I do realize that those businesses most likely pass the tax on to us consumers, but let us stick to the point, shall we? On that vote, virtually every Democrat in the House and Senate voted yes, every Republican voted no, three were absent. So you can see how important it is to have that supermajority if you want to raise taxes to pay for more things. And it's just important to take that away if you want to make it hard to raise taxes to pay for more things. All right, let's take a look at those numbers again. Remember the Oregon House, Democrats have 37 members. Well, 36 is the magic number for that supermajority of three fifths. So if Democrats lose two seats, the supermajority disappears and it's much harder to pass tax measures. Here's the Oregon Senate. Democrats have 18 members, Republicans 10, and there are two independents. That's the gray space that we're showing there kind of to the right there. The three fifths magic number here is 18. If Senate Democrats lose even a single seat to Republicans, their supermajority vanishes. Now, I talked about the possibility of change with Oregon lobbyist Patrick Singh. He thinks it is likely in the state Senate. Almost certainly. Uh, currently, with the Democrats having a supermajority um, in both chambers, I would say the just the numbers we've seen, folks we're talking to, the momentum on the Senate side, uh, they're, they're bound to lose uh, the supermajority there, which is they have it by one vote. Um, so there's three or four competitive seats right now in the Senate. All you have to do if you're the Republican side is win one of those and, and you've taken away the super majority. Well, that's a huge deal and one that we will be watching closely tomorrow. That same math holds true for the Oregon House. Remember, Democrats only have a two seat super majority there. It's possible that could also disappear tomorrow. On the House side, I. Uh, I think the Democrats will lose a couple seats. That's uh, both sides of folks that I'm talking to are, are kind of acknowledging that. So they'll most likely maintain a majority, uh, but whether or not they will have their 36 needed for uh, supermajority revenue raising measures, that's still very much up in the air. It's, it's gonna be a tough, tough haul. They had seven competitive seats. They'd essentially need to win, you know, five or six out of the seven to be able to, to be able to keep that. See, lots of power up for grabs with tomorrow's election. Yes, I know the big races are interesting to follow, but there is a lot going on besides those marquee races. What happens in the Oregon legislative races? Well, that's going to set the scene for the next two years of Oregon policy, the laws and the taxes that can or cannot be passed. It's also going to determine how easy or hard it is for the new governor to push their priorities through the state legislature. But well, we'd love to hear your thoughts on all this. Send an email to the story at KGW.com or call and leave us a voicemail 503-226-5090.